Hey everybody, welcome back to another Java video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get array user input in Java. First, we're gonna start off on a clean slate together. So we'll click File, New, Java Project. We'll call it something like Cool Project. Hit Finish, and then Expand to go to the Source folder and go to New Class. We'll call it Array User Input. Click this Public Static Void Main checkbox and hit Finish. Let's first get one element from the user, and then we can start to see how we can turn that into an array. So to get one element from a user, we can do that with a scanner. So type scanner scan. This can be named anything. It could be called S, it could be called anything else, but we'll call it scan equals new scanner. Right here, we're just making a scanner object so we can use it. Our project doesn't actually know what a scanner is, so these little helpful tools let us import that scanner code. So if you click import scanner, we can now use it and start getting input from a user. Now let's prompt the user for something. Let's say a word like, um, like what's your favorite color? What is your fave color? We can grab the result from the user by doing scan.next. This will get the next word that they type into the console window here. And uh, I'm sorry, this scanner needs a system.in in these parentheses here, because when we make the scanner object, it wants to know, hey, what are we actually going to be scanning input for? And it's going to be this console window, and that's what system.in means. So we'll save it and click the green run button to run it. It says, what's your favorite color? And we'll say orange. We hit enter and then nothing happens. We want to store this word, so we'll store it as a string variable, string s equals scan.next, and then we can print out s, for example, just so that we know what that variable is, and then we'll start getting multiple variables and storing it into an array. So what's your favorite color? Orange, enter, and then we print the value orange, which is stored into a variable called s. Now let's do a super simple example of storing into an array. We can say, what are your three favorite colors? We're just gonna delete everything else now, and we'll make a new string array. To make an array in Java, you type the type of what you want it to be. Ours are gonna be strings. Then you do square brackets. You name it whatever you want. So this one would be called colors, for example. Say equals new string with square brackets. And then inside those square brackets, we're going to put the size of it. And since it's three colors long, we're going to put three. Then to define those elements, you say that colors of the very first element. So the first element of an array is always zero. So to set the first element of the colors array, that's going to be equal to scan.next, which just gets the first word that the user enters. And we're going to repeat that three times. One, two. And then we'll just print out the values of that array just to make sure we're actually storing it. So we can print out colors of zero, colors of one, and colors of two. Save it and run it. Now when we type our three favorite colors, scarlet, orange, and blue, and then we see all those values are actually stored into the array. Now let's do another example with numbers. Let's delete all this again and say, how many numbers will you enter? So now we could do this for three or we could do this for a hundred different numbers and store all of them into an array. To get the number that the user will enter here, we could do scan.next int. This gets the next integer. And we'll say int n is whatever that integer that we enter is. And since this is going to be n numbers long, it could be a thousand, it could be just one. We want to write some code that can handle all of that for us. And we can do that with a for loop like this. To make a for loop, you type four. And then you type three different pieces. Piece one is where it's going to start. So we'll start with a variable called i equal to zero. And then while i is less than n, we'll increment it one time. 
we'll make our array up here. It'll be an integer array. We'll call it a equals new integer array. And the size of this one is going to be what we just entered. So it's going to be n. Right here, we can make things a little more helpful. Great. Enter n integers. They will enter all of their integers. And then we just say that each element looping up is equal to whatever they enter. Scan.next int. And I'll explain all of this again step by step at the very end after we run it. Let's print out all of those values. We can do that really easily with a for loop as well. We'll do that like this. While i is less than n. And we'll just print out the element at i. Save it and run it. I know it's confusing, but again, I'll go through it again. How many numbers will you enter? Let's enter six. Great. Enter six integers. Four, two, seventy-five, five, two, one. Oh, this actually isn't working because this needs to be i. We were just setting the first element every single time. So it picked up the very last one. Save and run again. 65. Oh, no, I don't want to enter 65 numbers. Let's start over. Let's enter six numbers. And there you go. Let's go through this line by line now. So when we click the green run button, we run code inside of the main method. We first make a scanner that'll get input from the console window. Java knows how to do this because we imported that Java scanner code up top. We prompt the user for how many numbers they'll enter. They type any number they want. We grab that integer with the scanner code and store it into n. We say, great, you're gonna enter that many integers now. So in this case, it was six. Then we create a new array of integers with size six. Next, we see a for loop with integer i equal to zero. i is less than six, so we run this code. a of zero is going to be the next integer. So we set the first element in that array to whatever we enter, and that was 34. Next, we go to the very top and increment i by one. Now the array at index one is whatever we enter, which is 76. And we go all the way up until i is now six. Six is not less than six, so we break out of the for loop. Now our array is filled with values that we entered. Next, we see another for loop, integer i is zero. Zero is less than six, so we run the code in here. We print out the array of value zero, which is 34. We increment i by one. We print out a of one, which is 76, and all the way down until we print a of index five, which is 23. Next, i is six. Six is not less than six, so we break out of the for loop and our program is done. And you can do anything with this array. Once it's stored in the array, it's stored for you to use it however you want to. And it also works with all different types as well. So I hope this helped you. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.